Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to today's lesson connecting to a database. For today's lesson, you will require uh, Microsoft Visual Studio and SQL Server Management Studio. You can find download links of them both in the description. Uh, in today's lesson, you will learn how to fetch data from a database and how to display set data in a grid view or in separate text views. So let's start by creating a simple database. For this example, we will be using our own computer as a virtual server. To do this, you will need to enter your computer's name into the server name input, followed by a backslash and SQL Express. If you don't know what the name of your computer is, you can find that out like this. Head over to computer, right click and hit properties and bam this string over here is your computer's name so as i said head over to sql server type in the name backslash sql express uh, make sure that the authentication is set to windows authentication and log in using the same credentials as you would use to log into your Windows session. Head over to the databases tab and right click it, select new database. We're going to be creating a database about movies, so call your database movie db. Uh, next we're going to need a query to create and fill a table. I'm just going to use a pre-written query. So just pause the movie and uh, execute the following queries. Also note the identity keyword over here. Uh, this will make sure that the ID field is auto incremented each time we insert a new movie. So just execute them queries. There we go. And as you can see, <coughs> a few sample movies have been asserted. Alright, next step, connecting Visual Studio to this database. In Visual Studio, create a new Windows Form project and call it Movie Tutorial. And then head over to your data connections, right click and select Add Connection. In the Add Connection pop-up, Set your data source to Microsoft SQL Server and enter your server name, which is your computer name, with a backslash and SQL Express Windows Authentication and select our newly created movie database from the drop down list. If you want to display large amounts of structured data akin to an Excel spreadsheet, a grid view would be the best solution. There are also the easiest type of data containers to set up. So we're going to start off by displaying all the data found in a grid view. So in your toolbox, select a grid view there under the data tab. There we go. Data grid view and drop it on your form. Uh, uncheck the adding, editing and deleting checkboxes and hit the little arrow on the top right and um, in the choose data source drop down list click add project data source just follow these steps um, select the uh, latest connection which we created expand the connection string tab and uh, copy, copy the connection string. We're going to need it later. That's fine. Expand the table step, movies, and select everything. There. That is, that is going to display all the data found in the database. So I'm just gonna expand this a bit. There we go. So if you run your project now, 
you will notice that all the data found in the database is being displayed in the squid view. There we go. Next, we're going to display our data in separate text views. So add four labels and four text views to your form, like this. And call your text views text title, text director, text genre, and text release. Um, to keep matters uh, organized, we're going to need a new connection. We're going to add a new connection class to our, to our project. This connection class will uh, contain all the code that is needed to fetch data or modify data in the database. So in your solution explorer, add a new class and call it connection. The first thing this class is going to need is a connection string. You can uh, write your own connection string, or if you're lazy, like myself, um, just click our connection in the server explorer, and in the properties window, look for connection string, and just copy paste it. So, <coughs> string connection string, equals BAM. Uh, don't forget that a backslash in a string is defined by two backslashes as a single backslash is recognized as an escape character. So next create a new function that returns an array list called get all movies with an int for input. In this function, define a new SQL connection. Using our new connection string. Um, open and close the connection. And between those two, define a new query. And this query will simply um, fetch all the data from table movies, where id equals input id. Right, have to concatenate the strings. There we go. Then use another using. And this one is going to use an SQL command. And this command will use our query and our connection. Uh, since this function um, reads data, we're going to need an SQL reader and have it execute our SQL command command dot execute reader there we go while reader reads the data and this is where our array list is going to come in so um, I almost forgot to define an array list there we go, and this while loop is going to fill the data. So first define variables for title, director, etc. There we go, that fetches all the data, now add it to the list. <coughs> the 
Then close your reader and return the list. There we go. Now all we need to do is um, call this function in our in main your main form. form. Define an object of the new connection class. And also define a new array list that is going to uh, store the data fetched from our database. Uh, next, define a new function. Private void fill text fields. With an integer, oops, with an integer for an input. Come on now. Um, <clears throat> first fill your uh, new array list with the data from your connection class. And display the, the retrieved data in text field. To do this, enter the name of text field and call its text property and set it to list open array index number dot to string. And that's all there is to it. So do that for um, all the text fields. And don't forget to modify the indexes. And then call the function when this, when this form loads and have it um, retrieve the first movie. So save and load project. And as you can see, the data is now being displayed in the text fields. To conclude today's lesson, we're going to add an event to this grid view. Each time we select a movie, we want to display that movie's data in the text fields below. Uh, to do that, we are going to need the ID of a movie. And as you can see, the ID is stored in the first column of a row. So uh, start off by creating the event, select your uh, grid view, head over to the events window and double click the cell click event. Okay, so first we need the index of the current row. There, that gets the index. Uh, now that we know which row has been selected, we can get the value of the first cell of that row. First cell value. And of course we need to convert this to an int. And that's it. Now that we have the ID, all we need to do is call our fill text fields function and pass the ID as input. So if you save and load your project now, the data in the text fields should change each time you select the movie. That sums up today's lesson. If you have any further questions, feel free to ask me them in the comment section below. Or if you have any further questions, you can also visit my website. There's a written tutorial there of today's lesson. So I um, hope you found this lesson interesting and I hope to see you again for our next lesson in which we will learn how we can manipulate this database using insert, update and delete statements using this form.